everybody and welcome back. It's me, Shrevel, and welcome back to Cafe Rouge. We left off on a bit of a cliffhanger. We went to go and talk to Antone, and apparently there was a cloaked person in his office. Came to a disagreement, and now that person is leaving, and we need to hide, like, right now. Because they sound a dangerous. Looking to my left and right, there was an empty closet at the bottom of the stairwell. I made a run for it and hid myself inside. The door creaked open and echoes of footsteps sounded as the figure made his way down. It was too dark to see who it was. Oh boy. Ah. Oh no, no, no. Oh. Oh, I like her earrings. I didn't realize they were, uh, Pentagon? No, that's not right. There's too many sides. Whatever. Sexagon? It's cute. Oh, they appear to be in some kind of a business suit of sorts. Mm. Oh, don't get closer. Do not get closer. Back off. Oh, God. Oh my god. He knew she was there, and that was a warning. That's what that was. Ooh. But she didn't scream, so maybe he's not entirely sure someone was there? Who was that? I was too afraid to move for another five minutes. Slowly, I creaked open the closet door. I didn't bother removing the blade. With stealth steps, I climbed the stairs, knocking on the door. Ah, Miss Black, come in. Meekly, I stepped into his office. Um, I wanted to ask about next week. I have a field trip for school, so I was wondering if I could have a few days off. A few days off? Yes, I'll make them up somehow. I'll do double shifts next week. I'm really sorry. Anton walked over to pat my head, smiling. Of course, school's important. You don't have to make it up. Really? Yes, that's no problem. Pausing, I looked down, not sure what to say. That sure was easy. Uh... Don't ask about what happened in the office, because I guarantee we weren't supposed to see it. Perhaps we should ask about Demi. What did I do to step on his toes all of a sudden? Um, I wanted to ask about something else. About Demi, did I do something to make him angry? Pursing my lips, I immediately regretted bringing it up, but it was too late. Antone's face dramatically changed. His happy smile pulled down into a frown and furrowed brow the moment I said Demi's name. We actually had an argument earlier before you came. He looked down and sighed. Don't mind him right now. I apologize for what he did on my behalf. On your behalf? He raised his gaze, fixing his eyes on me. Yes, unlike everyone else here, I know him best, and I know exactly why he put you through that. I looked down, trying not to remember the image of the pool of spilled blood. Not to mention him yanking uh, her arm around like some freaking rag doll. Excuse me. But you don't have to worry. It's completely my problem, and I'm sorry you got involved, Miss Black. And actually, next week I'll be leaving again to take care of some business matters on some properties I own, so we'll both be away from Café Rouge in the next coming week. I'll see you again when we both come back from our trips the week after. I see. Anton smiled at me, then he glanced down and stopped to look at my collarbone. What is that you're wearing? He pointed at the revealed edge of a gold plate of my harp choker. Oh, um, it's my pendant. Untying my bow tie, I reached out and pulled out my harp choker pendant. Antone stared, shock seeping into his face. Where did you get this? Once again, his eyes pierced mine. It's from my best friend. He gave this to me. Antone's face distorted into something like confusion and anguish. He looked at me with a strange kind of searching despair, as if he was waiting for me to confirm something. When he finally realized I had no more to say, a smile stretched on his lips, but it didn't touch his eyes. It's very pretty. You must treasure it. 
Nodding my head, I had to smile. After all, this was a precious gift from Valen. I do. With nothing more to say, I left his office. Whatever he was looking for, I guess he didn't find it. Oh, we're already on the field trip. Cool. Now this room here was the dining room of the family. The butler used the pantry room, which was right to the next room. The tour guy led us through the rooms of the mansion. It was the middle of the week and the second day of the junior field trip to Georgia. Yesterday we spent the day visiting old monuments of the Confederacy. Today we're visiting an old southern mansion and cotton plantation that got restored after Civil War. And now this bedroom belonged to the young lady of the house. We headed upstairs and now to the bedrooms of the Blanche family. The intricate designs and expensive fabric were beautiful like something out of the Wizard of Oz. But even with all the eye candy, I couldn't help but be distracted. Anton's face haunted me, along with that conversation I heard in his office. Not bothering to pay attention, I looked out the window. Below a large, shady tree, there was a cross and a small grave. It was quite blurry to see through the glass, but I could have sworn there was a familiar figure down below, standing in front of the grave. Interesting! Hmm, I wonder who that could be. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, I love this. I leaned in closer and squinted my eyes. Watch out! I heard a crack of the glass. Suddenly I found myself falling out into the open and grabbed out the empty air. What luck gods hate on you so much? <laughs> Good grief. Somebody get help! I can't watch! Well, a lot of help you are. You clearly aren't going to be an a uh, EMT. The lawn of green was coming up too fast. There's no way I could survive a two-story fall. This height, you survived a six-floor story drop at the age of 13. I think you'll be fine. You'll bounce. You'll be okay. Closing my eyes, I waited for the impending force of gravity to take me. Strange. The pain I was expecting didn't come. Was I dead? I opened my eyes to find a human cushion underneath. You! Anton was clenching his teeth, probably hurt from taking my impact. Ain't that just freaking cute! <laughs> Did anyone tell you you're heavier than you look? Ha <laughs> oh, ho! This is... What? I'm not fat! <laughs> That's so cute. Why are you even here? I was about to ask you the same thing. What are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be away on a school field trip? Ah, Mr. LaRouge. We both looked up at the window with the shattered glass above. The tour guide was waving to Anton. Thank goodness you saved one of our guests. Everyone, this is the owner of Blanche Mansion, Mr. LaRouge. He donated and restored this estate to its former glory and made it a museum. The owner of Blanche Mansion? Oh, well, they did say that thousands of years old. So okay, interesting. Oh, maybe the Lizzie person, maybe that's their grave? Possible? And they were human and not a vampire? Oh, many much conspiracies and theories. I turned to face him. His eyes refused to meet mine. You should get going now. Lifting me off him, Anton quickly got up and left through the mansion door, going inside. I laid there on the grass, not bothering to get up. Anton, the owner of Blanche Mansion? Something wasn't right here. Why would that be impossible or even improbable? He's a vampire. They've already admitted that they live thousands of years as opposed to the hundred of years that a human can live. Not totally improbable. The field trip flew by like a breeze. I was back at school before I knew it and had lots of questions dying to be answered. But for now, I needed to head to work. Upon opening the scarlet door, I was surprised to find myself in an empty room. Where is everybody? Making my way to the dining hall, everybody was all over the place. What was going on? Oh, Isis, glad you're here. We're really super busy with the big catering tonight. Big what? Catering? Yes, yes, tonight the whole cafe will be hosting a big dinner party. It's a very distinguished vampire coven family. Candace walked up to us. Dear, why don't you head to the kitchen? Aldo needs lots of help tonight for everything. Also, you should put on your uniform before you head inside next time. Oh, sure. Candace seems like she's warmed up a little bit. Just a teeny bit, and I think that has a lot to do with the uh, exchange that happened between Isis and Demi, so 
We'll see. I have a feeling she's probably still a bit of a twat. Oh, speaking of Demi. We need the appetizers done later, otherwise you're not going to have time for desserts. Or, upon opening the kitchen door, Demi's attention abruptly turned to me. There was a short moment of silence, and then he left. Um, afternoon, Aldo. Ah, something, something in whatever language, probably German from the looks of it, says Miss Isis. We are very busy tonight. There are ingredients on the table. Fabulous. Whew, that was hard. I could hear the guests arrive outside the kitchen door. Everything was so chaotic, but I had to take a peek. I sneaked outside the kitchen room door into the lobby. Some more wine, ma'am. Oh, thank you, sir. It was crowded. I could barely see anybody. I made my way to the dining hall. Just as expected, it was crowded. I carried a tray holding glasses of champagne. <sighs> Nobody's noticing that I'm human. Congratulations on the Golden Thousand. Your daughter must be so proud to be the only family with their grandfather left living. Oh, there's Suzanne now. And her son. The Mikhail's heir. Oh. Hmm. That would explain some things with Fallon as well. The voices began to fade away, but I had to hear more. I could have sworn they said Michaelis. A pleasure to finally meet you, Valentino. Oh! <gasps> Did they just say? People continued to crowd over one particular table. Squeezing through the crowd, I saw the center of attention. A boy with pink hair and red-hued eyes dressed in a comely black suit was greeting other vampires. And he is so cute, all dressed to the nines, let me just say. I couldn't believe my eyes. Please, Valen's just fine. Only my mother insists on my full name. My mind blanked. It couldn't be true. But it was Valen in the flesh. My best friend this whole time. Valen is a vampire. A million thoughts passed through my head as I stood there like some frozen duck. At the same moment, I felt a tap on my shoulder. Miss, excuse me, can I please get through? Uh, sorry. At the sound of my voice, Valen turned his head. The glass of blood slipped from his fingers, shattering into a million pieces on the carpet floor. Our eyes locked into place. Oh, Mr. McKellis, your glass. Mr. McKellis? I retreated. Disappearing through the crowd of vampires, I covered my eyes, hiding my green pupils from the numerous red. To my dismay, Valen followed me. They did say that if she was to go out here, that she did have to have contacts. Maybe they thought that in order for her to blend in, she was wearing contacts. Doesn't Valen have different colored eyes? Because they weren't red. I wasn't paying attention. What color eyes did he have? Were they yellow or something? We'll have to pay attention the next time we see him in school. Sorry, excuse me. Pushing his way through the crowd, he didn't lose sight of me once. Wait, miss, excuse me. Why are these people so slow? The crowd of people was hard to push through. Which way should I go? Night bar, front lobby, pastry room. Uh, let's go to the lobby. I don't think it'd be a wise idea to go to the night bar. Oi, watch where you're going. Sorry. Just when I was about to reach the kitchen door, a hand caught my shoulder. Isis, is that you? With a little force, I shook off his hand quickly. Darting the other direction, I had no choice but to go out the door. Mmm... With nowhere to run, I exited through the scarlet door. The streetlight glowed daunting orange. In no time, Valen found me, and he stepped out of that same scarlet door into the night. I turned my back to him. Isis, is that really you? There was a long silence and no one spoke. You should go back to the dinner party, Mr. Michaels. Come on, Isis, don't give me that. And why shouldn't I? Facing him now, I glared into those red-hued eyes. Those deceiving eyes I foolishly trusted for all of my life. Why didn't you ever tell me? You never told me you worked at a vampire cafe. That's because I was trying to protect you. Protect you from these blood-sucking monsters. Wrong thing to say. Oh, God. I get it. She's scared. She's freaked out. But you don't say that when you've just discovered your friend is a vampire. Wrong choice of words. Valen winced, hurt stabbing his features. He looked down, face stricken with pain. Can you please hear me out? Please, let me explain. Refusing to meet his eyes, I didn't know what to say. 
Silence only accompanied us as the night prolonged, and I didn't want to stay one second longer with him. If you excuse me, Mr. Michaelis, I must get back to work. Isis, please, hear me out! But before I could step back, a tall figure emerged standing in the doorway, blocking the entrance. What are you doing out here? Ah, nothing. I was just going back to work. Reaching out towards me, Anton grabbed my arm. Gently, but with harsh enough force, he yanked me behind him. Concealed by Valen's view, I stared up in surprise. Anton glared down at Valen with a foreboding expression. Boy, you have a lot to learn. Fortunately for you, I won't allow you to drag her down with you. Go and run back to Mama Wolf if you know what's good for you. Mama Wolf? Oh, fairies! I love them! Unless he's being rude and calling his mom a bitch, possibly he's a half-blood of a werewolf and vampire? I'm just saying. Again, theory. Generally, there's vampires. There's also werewolves. We'll find out. Either way. Valen took a step back, wide-eyed and clearly intimidated. But then again, there's also a difference between pure blood and half-blood, so who knows. Without another word, Anton dragged me back inside. Um, Mr. Le Rouge, he's a friend from school. I was... Be quiet. I didn't dare say any more. Still holding onto my arm, he pulled me through the lobby crowd towards the kitchen door. Shutting the door behind us, Anton led me through the kitchen. Almost slamming down his arms, he trapped me between himself and the kitchen counter. Why did you leave the kitchen? His red eyes pierced mine, and for a moment his intense stare paralyzed me. I... All the left, I, I was finished with the bravars, and the crowd was huge. I thought I could hide. Anton continued to stare intensely, and I couldn't help but feel my face turning red. His face was inches away. I could almost feel his breath on my face. Did you forget what I told you? If anyone finds out you're human, you're dead. Right now, there are hundreds of vampires prowling our cafe. Do you know how dangerous it is right now for a human girl like you? Do you understand how serious the situation is? Also, what is your relationship with that Michaelis boy? I suggest that while you continue to work at Cafe Rouge, you cut off all contact with him. I don't want to see you with that Michaelis boy again. Wow, this really sucks as a situation because this is our childhood friend, you know? Granted, yes, I, you know, I have a feeling he didn't say anything to protect her because, assuming she is strictly human. She doesn't need to know that because she get dragged into this crap. But I don't appreciate what Antone's doing. Mm. Sorry, I, I get irritated with situations like these. Sir, I'm sorry that I left the kitchen without your permission, but you're not jealous, are you? Where did that come from? The red spread across his face, but very quickly that vanished as his face took on a more steely expression. His intense gaze paralyzed me as he continued to stare into my eyes. Not saying a word. Antone. His hands locked down on my wrist, trapping my body as he towered over me, pinning me against the kitchen counters. I couldn't move. Is he your... Bow? Is he your bay? What is that word? I can feel my cheeks flush. I think that's French for love, isn't it? A lover, I think. What? I'm asking you, is he your boyfriend? What was going on? Why was Anton asking these kinds of questions? No, Val is just my friend. All right. His right hand then reached up to my forehead, parting a few strands of hair from my face as he looked at me. As long as you work here, I won't allow anyone else to touch you. You're my employee, and I suggest if you don't want the vampire authorities to find out about our little secret, you do as I say. He then looked away, breaking his intense stare, and I saw a fleeting moment of uncertain uncertainty flash across his face. Anton. Suddenly his arms surrounded my waist as he pulled me into a tight embrace. My face was buried into his chest and he held me in his arms. Anton! I want to keep you safe. It's dangerous out there. He loosened his arms around me and slowly he let me go. Then suddenly he chuckled, breaking from his intense demeanor like he was suddenly amused by something else. Stay here for the rest of tonight's shift. Trust me, you don't want to go out there. His eyes shone a gentle hue, but beneath there was a stern warning like he meant all that he said earlier. Letting me go, he briskly left through the kitchen door. What is going on? I have so many questions. God, why would you so 
just an employee? Why are you suddenly hugging on me like this? I'm so confused. My heart was still pounding. With fear. At least I think it was. I think it would be a mix of fear and, oh my god, what happened? The bright morning sun glared into my eyes. I still couldn't believe it. Balance of vampire. Maybe my body just hasn't gotten over the shock yet. Like you don't realize someone is dead and reality kicks in a few days later. Jeez, now I'm getting all existential again. <sighs> getting out of bed, I got ready for school. History class started as usual. The bell rang soon enough and Mr. Davidson came walking in soon after. Good morning, everybody. I have an announcement today. Tomorrow will be my last day. Did he just say last? Oh wait, is this the entire semester? What? Things have come up and I'll have to switch schools. Your normal history teacher will come back after I leave. Everybody groaned. <laughs> uh, we like this guy better. He is super cute. With Mr. Davidson here, people were able to get away with so much stuff. He really is a softie. Now that that's over, let's start class. Ronnie, do you want a goodbye present? We should throw a goodbye party! Somebody order Chinese. Ooh, ooh, or pizza. No, both! Um, I appreciate all this, but um, as expected, we skipped class entirely as the students took over. Yeah, way too much of a softie. Well, time for another day at the cafe. I shut the door behind me. Where is everybody now? <laughs> what? Uno pomegranate, senora. Oh, now it's Spanish? What? May I'm telling you, well-traveled. French, German, Spanish, whatever. Good afternoon, Aldo. What do I have to do today? Eh? Aldo blinked surprised. Oh, did the big boss tell you? Tonight, no cuisine. Oh, that's right. Last night was a dinner party, so Aldo has the day off. He killed himself last night and almost set his hair on fire. Again. Then, what should I do? Um, I'm sure Christopher needs help or something. Why did you go find them? Well, another day in the cafe won't do me bad. Let's just hope I don't run into that guy. Um... Chris works in the bar, so let's head to the bar. Hiya, Chris. Hey, Isis, what's up? Nothing much, just looking for something to help with. Aha, did Aldo kick you out of the kitchen? Setting down the glasses, Chris brought over a bottle of... Raisling? What is- And set it on the bar counter. Y'all are just coming up with words now. I have never seen that, don't even know what it is, but okay. Wanna learn some of my secret vinification techniques? Heck yeah, are you kidding me? I love it when bartenders like swirl stuff around and whatever, it's neat. Taking my hand, Chris brought me over behind the bar. There are two general categories of wines. The still uncarbonated kind and the sparkling carbonated kind. You know where we get our wine? I shook my head. We rely on a local wine distributor that brings imports from wineries in Italy and France. We also get, oh, maybe it wasn't Spanish. Maybe it was Italy, or excuse me, Italian that Aldo was speaking, possibly. We also get our wine from across the West Coast in California. I nodded my head, waiting for him to continue. These grapes are crushed and fermented and finally are shipped to us after one to three years of living in the cellars. For the next few moments, he demonstrated everything he knew about winemaking. Do not ask about Demi. Let's not. Don't ask. Um, I think I should go check the lobby. Who knows? Aldo might need me again. Oh, okay. Thanks for the help, Isis. I feel like at this point it would just be best to not even bring it up. You know? Yes, I'm sure everybody was there to witness it all, but let's not. Shall we? Time to head home. Time for school again. Oh, it's just day in, day out. Another day of school is over. Time to head to work. I opened the kitchen door. Aldo was in the back counter holding baskets full of brown crud? Um, hey Aldo, what are you doing? God, after... <laughs> what? After mid, mid dog? What? Probably German. 
probably means like, hi, how are you? I don't know, Miss Isis. And for those of you that actually read German or any other language, tell me what these things say. Tell me how to pronounce them. <laughs> Just sorting truffles. Truffles? I don't like mushrooms. I don't care if it's a truffle. I'm not, I don't like it. Yes, can you not tell? Mamma Mia truffle mushrooms never heard of? I ate chocolate truffles before. No, big difference. Okay, chocolate truffles are delicious because it's just chocolate. Actual truffles is a mushroom and is mush gross. Ugh. Aldo patted my shoulder. Try this. He slipped a thin slice of brown crud into my mouth. The aroma and taste bursted onto my taste buds and took me by surprise. This crud was darn tasty, like eating an earthy perfume. I mean, we all have our opinions, even if they're wrong. <laughs> now, now, I'm sorting the Chinese truffles from the Italian. Throw the Chinese away, please. They're just trash. If you can please prepare these truffles for me, that would be lovely. I love his accent. <laughs> Good luck. I hope there's a big enough difference between the two, because to me, a mushroom is a mushroom, so. <sighs> Finally, they're finished. Setting the truffles aside, I left through the kitchen door. Where was everybody? With no one around, I climbed up on the stage. The sounds of my footsteps echoed through as I ventured further in. Stepping over the wires, I carefully avoided the stage equipment. There was a glimmer of gold in the haunting dark. Again! Why are we being nosy? We're already in so much trouble as is! I was too drawn in by the possibility of finding the source to be frightened by the unknown. Hmm? I found something. There it stood, concealed in the dark, a large golden harp, much taller than I, half hidden under a dusty cover. Hesitantly, I reached my fingers over the strings. What are you doing here? <laughs> Gasping, I rolled my body around. Uh, I was... His eyes wandered to the golden instrument, observing it carefully, pondering. It wasn't long before his attention turned back to me. Do you know how to play? I'm sorry? He chuckled. Play the harp, silly goose. Oh, no. Would you like to learn? He pulled the dusty cover off, revealing the golden spe spectacular in its entire entirety. Antone held out his hand, waiting for me. Come here, let me teach you. I hesitated, because I wasn't entirely sure what his intentions were. After a moment of consideration, I decided to place my trust in him and gave him my hand. Antone pulled over a bench and led me to the seat. Now, this is a pedal harp, which makes you a harpist. Those seven pedals below are what makes the notes flat or sharp. Pardon me, Miss Black, you do know basic music theory, yes? I nodded. Thank God, because I don't. <laughs> I only took the chorus, and I never learned how to read the notes, because my teachers didn't care. Now then, hand position. He walked away. It was too dark to see where he was going. I gasped suddenly as I felt his body press against my back. Yeah, okay! <laughs> he rested his head on my shoulder while his long, lean arms reached out beneath my own, lifting them up toward the strings. There isn't one perfect hand position, but in your case, make sure your elbows are just above the level of your ribcage. His fingers intertwined with mine. Now when you pluck, make sure to close your fingers to your palm right after playing a note. Don't want to snag your finger now, do we? He chuckled into my ear. I only managed to let out a whimper and a nod. It was so hard to concentrate, his breath right under the line of my jaw. Now pluck. I plucked the string playing the note. Good. Now press down the pedal. Good. Play it again. Anton finally let go of my hands. I let my fingers freely flow across the strings, playing a short melody. The sound was gorgeous. My, what a natural. His head still rested on my shoulders. I swear I could feel him smile. Trying not to concentrate on his breath, my eyes wandered elsewhere. Um, Antone? Yes. Who taught you all this? Antone grew quiet. An old friend. There was a long, silent moment. Unexpectedly, I felt Antone let me go as he stood. You should go home now. Then he left. Ugh. It's chilly. The night had a strangely daunting atmosphere. I didn't know why. But for some reason, it felt unsafe.
And I'm gonna tease y'all with another cliffhanger. We are leaving it there today, ladies and jelly spoons. Shrivels, thank y'all so much for watching. If you love it, don't forget to hit that like button. Let's hear them. I'm teasing you with a cliffhanger. Battle cries and Balan. Woo! Yeah, yeah. I'll see you guys.